On today's video, we're going to share with you our favourite spots in Liverpool. And we'll be giving you a tour round our Airbnb. We're an early retired couple that sold everything we own to travel the world for the next 10 years, tracking our budget every step of the way. On our way to the first stop, the Baltic Triangle, we checked out the street art along the way. And you'll see when we arrive there that I'm somewhat excited to be there. The main reason for that is because after walking two miles, Sarah said, did you check if it was open? And I then realised I hadn't. Right, Sarah, we made it. We made it. We did, we did. And I, th I think you got quite a few steps out of that as well. Yeah. And the wonderful news is, look behind you, it is open! So this place is fantastic. This is the Baltic Market. And in normal times, you will be inside. It's a big room with lots of establishments, yeah. tiny establishments that are serving a whole range of different foods and drinks. But it's just really imaginative. We sit outside, we use Uber Eats. It's All of the organisations are listed on there, so you choose where you want to order from, sit out here and all good. Sweet. And I'm interested, I love the imaginative way people are being, and I'm interested to know how this will change the world post-Covid. Is it going to be different? Do you think we'll be doing things like this more, sitting at a table and ordering on your phone, yeah, rather than standing in a long queue yeah. at the bar, which is something that's always annoyed me. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's good. So. Uh, getting really busy in here now it's yeah. what, just gone half 12 I'm very hungry and thirsty I think you are too yeah I keep seeing the food come out and it looks delicious yeah so, fingers crossed yeah right Sarah so we've just done Baltic Triangle thoughts recommend people do it absolutely I think it's a great place the, especially the Canes Brewery Village yeah which shows where all the bars and restaurants are really so um, it's and very good there's little eclectic shops in there as well yeah. and there's so much great stuff that you just wouldn't see on your average tourist trail to be honest so we need to go from here to Stanley Park it's a long walk isn't it it is about <laughs> three miles and the weather's closing in onward Stanley Park now, Liverpool and Everton have got something of a history of being just mighty football clubs mm -hmm. in the world of football. Quiz question for you. Mm. Which one do you think was formed first? I, I would say Liverpool. I th yeah, do you know what? I think I would have said Liverpool had, had, I, I, had I not <laughs> heard from a good friend of mine who told me it's actually Everton. And oh. Everton were playing on Anfield before Liverpool were there and mm. Everton were actually a church football team that changed its name to Everton in the late 1800s and they moved to Goodison Park and that's when Liverpool was formed and went to Anfield so there's a lot of information there yeah. I said to you earlier that there are also three cathedrals in Liverpool I'll tell you what the third one is a very good friend of mine told me the third cathedral is Anfield. Uh, he said it is a cathedral of football. So there you go, you live and learn. Everton fans watching this, don't give this a thumbs down. I'm not a Liverpool fan, neither Sarah, and we're not Everton fans. So what we're going to do, Sarah, for a bit of fun and excitement, we're in Stanley Park now. Yeah. In that direction is Goodison Park, Okay. the home of Everton. Where that it, big black cloud of rain is. Yes, yeah, yes. Cool. There, where the blue sky is, Yay. is Anfield. Okay. I've always wondered just how far apart these two clubs are. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go to Goodison, have a little wander around, and then we're going to walk all the way from Goodison to Anfield. We're going to count the steps on our watches, and we'll also count the miles on our watches okay. as well, because I reckon it's a, probably about less than a mile, I would say, between the two. Okay. Up for it? Definitely. Right, let's go. I was thinking of taking a bit of time to tell the story of Everton. But actually, all the way down this stand, they've told the story themselves. So it'd be much easier if I just go down there really quickly and then speed it up and you've got everything you need to know, really. You may be thinking, need to know? I didn't think I needed to know anything about Everton Football Club. Well, what I can tell you is their nickname is the Toffees. So chew on that. Why couldn't they just get that down into a few PowerPoint slides? Right, we'll go around the corner and see what else we can see. I guess when Everton were formed, they didn't have access to PowerPoint. 
It was uh, really just the rich back in the 1800s that had access to Microsoft Office. And imagine if you lived in a flat up here and you wasn't an Everton fan. Worse than that, you're a Liverpool fan. And you're stuck having to look at Joe Royal every day. Can't be a barrel of laughs, can it, for anyone? Behind me is Goodison Park. And we just met some lovely security guards, very nice people. <laughs> Hopefully they are now viewers of To Go Rome. And we're gonna commence our walk across. I'll speed this up, but let's see how long it takes us to get to Anfield. Go! There you go, we did it. Did so it? half a mile door to door from Goodison Park to Anfield. If you saw our video a few weeks ago where I went to Swindon Town Football Club, I showed you from the outside the club shop. And I was always impressed by the size of that club shop, but I've just seen the club shop at Liverpool. It's, it's bigger. Well, I'm really impressed by Anfield. It's a, it's a massive stadium. Yeah. It's very tidy. It's, it's like they really respect their legendary history yeah. here, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. But... And I think that Goodison was impressive as well, it's, but it's more, more impressive at a more uh, kind of a traditional feel yeah. around the ground, isn't mm -hmm. it? But what do you think since you've been here? It was massive. Yeah, just like <laughs> club shop. It was massive. It was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. And the statues. Just the side of that stand there is huge. Yeah, and seeing all the statues and things of. Bob Paisley, Bill Shankly, and the memorial to the um, Hillsborough. Hillsborough disaster as well, the FA Cup semi-final. So here we are outside the COP, and this is also a bar. There's the COP bar and the museum. We'd love to go to the museum, but in these COVID times, that's not possible. And in fact, the COP is currently a COVID testing centre. Yeah. And in fact, we're having our second jabs before we travel off around the world. Yeah. Where are we having that done? We're having that done at Aston Villa. Yeah, at Villa Park. Villa Park. Behind the goal there at the Holt End, which is Aston Villa's version of the cop. Do not put anything in there that negative in the comments below or any <laughs> thumbs down about me comparing the Holt End to the cop. I'm not an Aston Villa fan either. I am. Sarah is. <laughs> right. I think we've done Liverpool and Everton. Yeah. And I think we've done it proud, to be honest. Yeah. There are more sights in Liverpool to see. So come with us as we take you on the continued magical mystery tour around Liverpool. I'd say one of our least favourite things about <laughs> Liverpool is the weather. It's been like this constantly. One minute sun, next minute rain. We had hail. A minute ago we had hail. And if I just pan around here, you can see a lot of but Liverpool is actually bathed in sun down there. It's, the wind is whipping round and it's peeing down with rain. Oh yeah, there we go, there's sun. Oh, still got a bit of wind, oh, a bit of sun. So we've just had our second jab or second set of jabs, second set of jabs yeah. here at Superdrug in Liverpool. And 
the, you know, people think traveling the world is easy. It is not. So we had our first set, we've had typhoid, rabies, hepatitis A. We've had yellow fever. Yellow fever. Um, tetanus. Tetanus. Polio. Polio. <laughs> we've had the lot. <laughs> we've had the lot. And she's given me so many shots in the arm today, I feel like a tea bag. <laughs> so. But the lovely Mary made us feel, feel yeah, welcome and comfortable. So. Mary, fantastic. Yeah. So she's a, she's a proper nurse. So she, she's not the girl who works in the nail bar, proper nurse yeah. <laughs> in Superdrug. So if you do ever need to get your travel vaccinations, uh, don't shun a place like Superdrug. It's gone really well. But we still have more jabs to have. Um, you're doing yours in Birmingham in a couple of weeks. I'm doing mine in Reading in a couple of weeks. Plus, we got to have a jab for COVID. Okay. Yep. The weather in Liverpool has been nothing short of ridiculous. <laughs> we should have got all of this done in one day, but because of the weather, you might think I'm overplaying it, but I'm not. People say to us, why do we want to travel the world and leave the UK? Here we are on the Wirral near Liverpool. A few minutes ago, it was sunny. And Sarah. That's Graham and Claire, friends of ours. It was sunny a few minutes ago. Did you hear that? This is May. This is May in England. I don't work for the British Tourist Board. But if I did today, I'd get fired. Because of the weather, we've had to split this now over three days. So we're on our way to the first of today's sites, which is a cathedral. And the thing is, I'm not wearing a coat. We had planned to go for dinner today, and we have to sit outside in the UK at the moment yeah. because of COVID, and the heavens absolutely open, so we had to cancel that. And really, <laughs> I know it's gonna pee down with rain. Yeah. I should be wearing a coat. But you know what? I'm sick of this weather. <laughs> So behind me is Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral. Quite an impressive structure with 16 columns made of concrete going up into the center. And this was built as part of a competition in the 60s, a design competition. And I think they came up with something pretty unusual, which was good. The one thing, if you look down the bottom, you can see there's remedial work taking place. And ever since it was built, they've had issues with it because it was built with economics in mind. And the remedial work started in the 1990s. It reminds me actually in the 1990s when I laid a patio at home and I thought I did a good job, but it just kept flooding. And it was at that time I thought to myself, I don't think anyone's going to ever include me in the design or build of a cathedral. And you know what, to this day, that's been the case. Behind me is Liverpool Cathedral. In all the times that Sarah and I have visited Liverpool, I've seen this perched up on the hill and just always thought what an imposing building it is. And it's only now since we've started to investigate, we realise that this cathedral in Liverpool is the longest cathedral in the world. And the height of it, well, the bells at the top are both the highest and the heaviest bells that peal, i.e. they make a tune as you ring them, in the whole world. I'm going to do my best with the aid of video to show you just how large and imposing this building is, but something tells me I'm not going to quite achieve it. A lesser known fact is the fella that designed this is also the fella that designed this. We're now at the Royal Albert Dock, built in the mid 19th century. It was the first structural building that was built with iron, stone and brick, i.e. no wood, which made it the first non-combustible structural building and working warehouse in the world. There are more grade one listed buildings clustered here than anywhere else in the UK. And it's a key part of Liverpool's UNESCO designation. Today, it is a hub of entertainment and tourism with over 20 eating and drinking establishments and three museums, specifically the Liverpool Maritime Museum. Can we go there? No, it's closed until Monday. Okay. The Beatles Museum. Can we go there today? No, it's closed until Monday. But we're leaving here on Friday. It's closed until Monday. Okay. And the Northern Tate Museum. Can we go there? 
everything's closed till Monday. Right. We're also steps away from the Museum of Liverpool. And behind me here are the Liverpool Lamb Bananas. The Liverpool Lamb Bananas can be found right across Liverpool. They're called Lamb Bananas because they're half lamb, as you can see, and half banana. So, I'm not going to tell you where they are. They're all over Liverpool, but they are Lamb Bananas. Our final spot on this tour is right behind me. It's the Liver Building built by the Royal Liver Assurance Company in 1911. And when it was erected, it was one of the tallest buildings in the whole country. On top of the Liver Building, you see two mythical birds. They're called the Liver Birds. One of them is looking out to sea. That's thought to be the female Liver Bird looking out over the Liverpool seamen as they're out working. And while they're out there, You've got the male liver bird looking out over the city of Liverpool and looking out for the families of those seamen. So let's finish with the views of Sarah and me and what we think of this city of Liverpool. Hey, weren't we going to show people our Airbnb? Yes, we're going to do that. But before we do that, we're going to tell people our thoughts about Liverpool. Okay. So Sarah, what are your thoughts about Liverpool? I I think it's a fantastic city. I think culturally, it's so much history and variety. It's a real vibrant city. It's easy to walk around and I just think it's a brilliant place. So how long should someone stay for if they came to Liverpool? Well, if the weather is good, I would say four to five days would be, would be good. Mm. If you have the weather like we've had, I'll give it 20 minutes. Yeah, no, good point, good point. Mm. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? I've, well, we've discussed this a little bit and it actually, it's made us think about our own travel style in, in many respects. Liverpool is a very large city and we're feeling that maybe for us at the moment, it's a little bit too large. We mm. would like something a little bit more compact where you can really get under the skin of the city. Yeah. It feels with the size of it, and we've been here a couple of weeks and in those two weeks we haven't really felt that we can get under the skin yeah. of Liverpool mm -hmm. so something a little bit smaller I think is our style yeah. going forward yeah. but I'll tell you one thing I do think about Liverpool and that is it's like nowhere else in England mm -hmm. it's up here on the northwest coast and just over the sea from Northern Ireland and I think in many respects that informs the feel and the culture of Liverpool if you're coming from overseas to the UK or to England and you go to London and say, right, tick, I've done England, I can tell you now, you have not. England has got so much to offer, yeah. but Liverpool is so different to London in feel and how the people actually operate here. If you haven't got Liverpool on your agenda, you need to get it on there now. Definitely. Okay, so that's how I feel about Liverpool. Mm -hmm. But we want to do the two go Rome scale of fun. Yay! So Sarah, the scale of fun, the first item on there is friendliness. What would you give it out of five? Uh, four out of five. Okay. Uh, everywhere we've been, the service and everyone we've met, just so friendly here. We've had some great conversations with people. Even today actually, yeah. we met AJ, we went, we went to a restaurant. VJ. VJ. We met VJ. <laughs> Sorry, AJ. I don't even know who you are. We met VJ and a really great guy yeah. from Malaysia. And it was, it just kind of typified our ex experience yeah. here that mm -hmm. there's just friendly people everywhere you come from. And VJ, you're now a subscriber of our channel and he's already told us he's going to give us hints and tips on what to see and do in Malaysia. That's the beauty of world travel, exactly, meeting wonderful yeah. people yeah. and those people here in Liverpool as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. secondly, transport, getting around. Transport, uh, four out of five again. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've used the Mersey Tunnel to get across to the Wirral and that went really well. It's got a regular train service going across there. Yeah. But actually, we've done almost everything we've done in Liverpool on foot. So yeah. it is a walkable city, but it's a large walkable city. So what about the variety of eating and drinking establishments? It's got to be a five. There are so many bars and restaurants. And, and at the moment, we're obviously, due to COVID, we're having to sit outside. And there's, there's lots of places that aren't even open. And there's just so many to choose from, different cult, different um, 
cuisine. Cuisine and quarters with all different <laughs> types of yeah. bars and things. We've we've gone to the Baltic Quarter, you would have seen that on this video. So if you're looking for something quirky, you've got the Baltic Quarter or Seal Street. Just up the way there in the shopping centre, you've got Liverpool One. And there's a whole shopping district and eating district there mm -hmm. where they're more your kind of uh, chain, chain yeah. restaurants. Yeah. But to be honest, anywhere we've gone around this fabulous city, we've been struck by the quality and quantity of places we can <laughs> eat and drink, hence this. <laughs> so next one is Clen Innes. What do you give it out of five? Uh, I give that a three out of five. I think the, the tourist places are, are superb. They're really clean. But I think when we've gone to the outskirts, there's not so cleanly. I guess it's a city, you're going to get that. But yeah, uh, yeah to, be, better. to be fair, in the city, great. Where our Airbnb is, there are issues with cleanliness and it's been a bit shocking to us, to be honest. Yeah. So, Liverpool, you need to up your game on that, mm. we're sorry to say. Mm. What about sightseeing options? It's got to be five. Yeah. It's, there's just so much to see. We're, we're actually, we were spoilt, spoilt for choice and struggling to see what we should put on our top. Top yeah. list, really. There's so much here. Yeah, that's right. If you're coming to Liverpool, you're going to be looking at your list of things to do and thinking, what can I cross off? Not what what can I fill my time with? You will fill your time. Do not worry about Definitely. that. So that gives Liverpool a solid four out of five on the two go Rome scale of fun. <laughs> so you wanted to see our Airbnb? This is it. So this is exciting. We've uh, we've just left Stone, Staffordshire, and here we are in Liverpool. So we're just going to give you a quick tour of our Airbnb here in Liverpool. This is the bedroom. It's a one-bedroom place. We've got a view over towards the Mersey over there, and this is this is basically you know that's where we sleep in. This bed, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> is it really wow. Nice? Is it really soft? Uh, well, uh -oh. bed's very soft. So if you like a soft mattress, <laughs> this is Which the place for you. We like a rather hard mattress. Uh, see, the owners are into a bit of YouTube as well. <laughs> um, not sure how this one works, but I bet they've shot some good videos on that. Uh, we have the bathroom. You have a look in there. So there's a shower and um, a shower. Look. <laughs> Uh, sink and toilet, which are really the things that I always look for in a bathroom. Nice little walkway through here, and you can see is that bloke trying to break in down there. And the bloke, I don't think he's breaking in. No, he's cleaning the windows. It's all right. It's not a problem. Um, <laughs> so through here into the remainder of the apartment, which, as you can see, is pretty vast. I do question, oh wow, they've only got David Bowie, Hunky Dory, on their record. We're going to play that. Yeah. TV, and TV. the internet in here is 150 megabits per second, incredible, that's very good. Through to the kitchen, we've got a fridge with Activia yoghurt, <laughs> coffee, none of this is ours, they've left all this for us. Here's a good idea, look at yeah. this. Oh, that was great. Look at that. A, so, if you're at home watching this, consider doing something similar. So, that's a pop stand. So, that's a pretty cool Airbnb, isn't it? And we really liked it. You got, you got David Bowie on <laughs> record. We can actually play vinyl in our we Airbnb. Loved that bit. Very we cool. Loved it. Really nice place. <laughs> so, we hope you've enjoyed our stay in Liverpool as much as we have. If you're new here, we're all about cost of living. And as we start traveling the world, we're gonna be going into the minutia of the costs for each location. So if you find that interesting, subscribe now. And if you're not new here, you've been around for a while, give us a thumbs up and tell us, are you thinking of coming to Liverpool? 
And we're only weeks away now, aren't we? I know. From leaving these soil, <laughs> this soil of the UK. Yeah. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. We have Ooh. a flight booked. And the secret is we are <laughs> not flying to Europe. We are flying long haul. We certainly are. In, is it that direction? Oh, I don't we, know. No, that way. If you know your way around <laughs> Liverpool, we're flying that way, long haul. And, and it's one way. It's a one way trip. <laughs> And it's going to be challenging. It's going to be really challenging. <laughs> so if you think that's going to be fun, come with us. Subscribe to To Go Rome. Anything else before we finish, Sarah? Nothing else from me. Just thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.